Hello there, welcome back. Today we're making a looping animation. That one over here, you see here on the screen. And it's a looping animation that is, was done in a free program like Twitter. Uh, it's just like Photoshop, but it's better when it comes to animation. I'm going to use this and I'm going to walk you through how you can make any animation for that matter that will be looping. So uh, let's get into this. First thing we need to do is first of all, come up with an idea of what we're going to animate, what kind of action will be happening on the screen. In this case, this is my sketch of what was going to happen. And you see here, I have a star for a lot of reason, but that's my very rough sketch. That's where, you know, the magic happens, if you will. And we clean out our idea. This time we have a proper hat and a character with another hand over here. And from here, I need to establish which of the elements will be moving because doesn't matter which element we'll be moving, we need to consider that we're going to make a looping animation. Now, what is a looping animation? Animation that loops, if you will, is if you have an action, that action needs to start on a specific frame and it needs to end on the same frame. So if our scene here starts with a character lifting the box, it needs to end with the character uh, uh, not lifting but opening the box. Now, if you only concentrate on the uh, different elements or the different actions in your piece, you will be fine. If you start doing everything at in on one layer, for example, you might have a little bit of trouble here or there. So don't do that. First things first is plan what exactly you want to do. So my main plan is to make this uh, box to open. I uh, have the smoke and then it closes. So if we just focus on the magic case. Here's the magic case. And here are all of the layers that you see here on my timeline are art in brown. Uh, because the case is brown. So we have a lid. We have the color that's beneath that lid. We have the light, which I didn't name. Double click, name your layers. Light, uh, yeah. You have the base. And you have the color of the base. So on the lid itself, we remove the color. And if I go through, here's the lid. Here a couple of animations. Z, a couple of frames. First frame, second frame, third frame. And it's open. This is where the uh, the case is opening. And you can see the light is also animated separately. But we have three frames with the case. And then all of a sudden, we have also three frames with the case being closed. So the first frame and the last frame of this animation, in this case, the last frame will be here. The case, the, the case, and the case is closed. All right, maybe just remove this and just look at the top, the lid, right? Opening and then closing. And that's just one animation that is on two uh, layers where the main animations are here, basically. And then we add the color. The color basically is following the, the line work, the line animation, which is the animation of the lid. Now, this is very simple, very basic. And uh, then you have the body, which is very static. The body appears to be on top of the case. And then we have the head. Then we have the eyes. And then we have the hat. The hat does have some animation. If I open the uh, the <laughs> the group of the hat, you have the hat. I didn't call the hat layer. We have one. Um, uh uh frame over here then the cat the cat the hat moves and then goes back to the same exact place of this frame over here so this this frame and this frame are pretty much the same so we have the beginning we have a middle and we have an, an end if you notice the hat was following all of that and it ended in the same position as we found it in the first place so that's the logic we had any looping animation, if, if we have to be honest. The most interesting part, I think, is the part with the smoke. Uh, the back hand is here, right? We have a weird shadow here. So the smoke here, is, I decided to do on a, well, different. The smoke, I think the smoke was my selling part in this animation. And if I go to the smoke, uh, it has two, um, two main groups. Uh, first of all, we have the, if I hide this, I guess, uh, the layers are in purple, by the way. So if we go to smoke that says red, let me move this, let's see. And this is the red one. So we're going to go 
and watch what happens. Obviously, we cannot see what happens because why? I disabled the, the main group. There you go, that's the group. So, the smoke here is, uh, I'm going to show a time lapse that I managed to record. Uh, I had this weird smoke coming out. First of all, I was going to make someone a genie, you know, uh, but then I was like, no, I, I'm just going to make this a weird smoke swirl effect. And as the way I have the cleanup sketch and the smoke, I decided to use both of them to start animating the smoke itself. So I divided the smoke into two parts, into two pieces, the, the bottom and the top part. And I named them uh, separately. I named it Smoke Red and Smoke Green. Of course, you can name your list the way you want. Uh, as long as you know where you're working at and what you're doing, uh, you're completely fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why I decided to uh, divide the smoke in two. But I decided to follow. It took me a while to pick the brush. I don't know. I, I have not my moments of picking the right brush. I don't know if this is the right brush. But I did want to make an animation with the smoke. And of course, I need to time that animation. So I started doing first the top part of the smoke, which was very round. Uh, as you can see, nothing uh, much happening. Basically, the top, the top part will be hitting the face and the hat in the uh, final animation. And I'm, I'm just following the sketch and animating based on that sketch. There's nothing. Uh, more complicated is just uh, coming up with the idea, sketching out that idea, and then just follow up with your sketch. Um, I decided first to animate on twos, on threes actually, but as you notice, then I will change a little bit the order of my keyframes and on my timeline in order for them to have the proper spacing. A few moments later. So on this layer, which is on top of the face, the face, ha the face has three separate layers. We have a layer with the uh, uh, with just the lines. Then we have a layer with beneath the lines, uh, the colors. Then we have the special effect on the face, which is becoming purple. <laughs> face purple. That's how we can name that. Right now, it's over here, and here's the animation of that. The more the the purple smoke if we will hits the face, the face becomes purple. We have a keyframe over here, and over here. Uh, we added a keyframe for the oppressed. So you don't have to make anything to your normal layer where you have your animation, okay? You just need to select your layer that you want to gradually fade out the color that you have in this case. So you go to animation curves. Uh, it's not the best place to be, let me tell you that. But you go to the keyframe that you want you add a keyframe from here and the only thing that you will have on your normal anima animated layer will be the opacity so you will only get a red line two dots and a red line so once i go back to the animation timeline you will see i have a diamond uh, figure here and then i have to add another keyframe uh, which again will be from uh, this button over here and then i can uh, again, select my, the, my layer that I want to lower the opacity of, with, of which is selected. And then I just can lower the opacity. In this case, I'm going to bring back the opacity up. So the face will stay, uh, it will stay lit. But as you notice, <clears throat> when I go back to animation timeline. On this particular keyframe, I have deleted the keyframe. So I can just lower the opacity. And we can have the gradual disappearing of the color. You can see that here on our opacity bar of that particular layer. And that's the other uh, fancy part that I added. Um, just because we want to, uh, again, go back to the first pose that we saw our character, which is over here. So no purple face, no movement of the hat. The chest is closed. And this is our last frame, and this is our first frame. And when we play this, we will get a looping animation. And uh, yeah, the other thing you need to know about the smoke, I guess, there's a couple of uh, layers of that, uh, of the smoke. And I just copy all the layers, and I just added a um, gazing blur, I think, which over, over, over here that blur 
and gaze in blur and i did that for all these little frames that you see here and then uh, as you notice on this layer the oppressed is 95 and there's a mode on it which is a color dodge mode and and and, and this is not it if we add this and we had the background and we do this and it looks like a finished animation of course there are more stuff to be done but uh all in all i think this is a perfect example how you can make a simple looping animation hopefully this video was helpful to you and if it was make sure you like it i'm i'm handling now uh yeah yeah <laughs> that's gonna be all for me goodbye for now <sighs> yeah i have too much time on my hands actually i don't but